What's up, Prime Fam? Welcome back to the channel, guys. As always, we're gonna start off with a little bit of training footage, a little bit of hype to keep you entertained. So uh, we're going to talk about a lot today. We're going to take you guys through my full body workout that I just did. A um, bunch of squats, bench press, stiff legged deads. We're going to take you through the whole nine yards. We're also going to talk about in today's video who I think full body workout training splits are superior for. So I think a lot more people, a lot more people should be doing full body training. And I'm going to explain who might fall into those categories. And then we're also gonna explain my workout split and how I have this all set up. So that way you guys can get a conceptual idea of how I'm implementing this. And we're also gonna kind of delineate and differentiate between full body training and powerlifting training, which powerlifting splits oftentimes look like full body workouts and they kind of are on paper, but the nuance that goes into designing a full body workout training routine versus a powerlifting split is actually very different. And I would say currently I'm more aimed towards full body training rather than powerlifting centric training. So we're gonna explain the difference there. Um, let's start off with what I did in training today though first. So I started off the day with tempo acid grass squats building up to a single there. I moved on to some close stance, pause high bar squats. Uh, after that, some doubles there. And then I had four inch deficit stiff legged deadlifts um, with ascending sets there. And then I did some short rest football um, bench pressing. Uh, so they're using the football bar. And then I went on to some single arm strict dumbbell overhead pressing, got really heavy on those. That's a really fun exercise. I'll be explaining why I did that later. Um, and then I went on to some core work, some plank pull throughs, as well as uh, some Copenhagen planks. So um, before I take you actually through the workouts, I'm gonna kind of play some of it on the screen as I talk about it. And I'm gonna kind of also bounce back and forth between um, why I think full body workout splits are superior as well as some information about the training I'm doing. That way I can keep you guys entertained. So starting off for the day, I did some tempo ass to grass squats in my competition stance, meaning low bar, um, you know, full gear on, my belt's on, knee sleeves are on and whatnot. The goal here is because I've been doing pause squats and getting pretty heavy on those for really long pauses, I wanted to reintroduce a non-pause low bar squatting exercise into the program, but I didn't want to rush my form. I want to actually still be working on end range position and mobilizing and getting comfortable in that bottom position. So I used a tempo about a three second eccentric, got up to 545 pounds for the day, and I did really well at controlling this load all the way into the hole and coming out of it. I'm using pound plates just for a little bit of clout. Honestly, I actually really just like training on pound plates. This is gonna sound weird, but the whip makes it feel less gross on my joints. Um, it's harder to control. My performance is a little worse, but it feels healthier, which um, I have some theories as to why. But anyway, in case you're wondering why I'm using pound plates there. Um, and then I did some back off work with some close stance, pause, high bar squats for doubles at 400. I think it was 25 pounds. Um, really working on long pauses as deep as possible, really close stance and being explosive out of the hole while staying in really even symmetry from left to right leg. I have a problem of always deviating onto my right leg more than my left. And so I'm trying to stay symmetrical and really work the quads there. Uh, we'll continue on with the rest of the workout split here in a little bit. I want to move on really briefly to who I think full body workouts are superior for. So generally speaking, if you wanna do a full body workout split, you either are probably gonna be a beginner or an advanced athlete. So beginners, they really wanna focus on quality over quantity. They need to get their technical uh, competency down on the barbell, so they need to be technically competent on a barbell. They need to improve coordination, improve awareness, proprioception of limbs, and they really just need to basically become a good coordinated athlete doing these movements that are gonna be very foreign to them. Uh, if you start doing really high volume workouts with beginners, they can definitely actually survive it because they're so under trained, they can kind of adapt to anything, but you're gonna see a lot of movement detriment there. And I don't think beginners should be doing really high volume routines. 
and full body workouts tend to be usually lower volume and more of an emphasis on movement quality as well as intensity and frequency. So you're gonna be training all the lifts at a higher frequency, usually on full body workout split. So beginners definitely, everyone kind of knows that though. But what I think people don't know as much is advanced athletes actually do really, really well on full body workout splits. So advanced athletes, we're already very technically competent. In fact, our coordination is extremely high. Our technical prowess is extremely high and we're very, very strong. So what does this mean? Well, it means your joints can get beat up really quickly. It means you get a lot more out adaptation out of less because every set you're so controlled, you're so coordinated, you're also having so much output because you're really strong. You're gonna see a lot of adaptation response just from one or two hard working sets. As we're an intermediate, they're kind of in between. They're technically competent, so they're safe on the barbell, they know how to move, but they're not so advanced that they're gonna get beat up from just a couple sets. So they're gonna need three, four, you know, higher reps, higher volume to incite a lot of muscular growth and some other things that maybe a full body workout split is not quite going to incite. This doesn't mean full body workout splits don't incite maximum muscle growth, that you have to understand that context is king here. For a beginner, you're gonna see way more muscle growth doing a full body workout split instead of some high volume kind of lower frequency split. Um, but advanced athletes definitely shine here. And I think actually more advanced guys should be using full body workouts than you regularly see. Weirdly, you don't see it as much like that. Um, next is gonna be long range of motion lifters. So you tall, lanky people. You watch a guy who's 6'2 with long femurs doing squats, one or two sets in, he's dying. You watch a five foot two female or even just a really short guy with short femurs, they can get away with three, four, five working sets of squats and barely breaking a sweat. So you gotta understand what kind of lifter you're dealing with here as far as biomechanics and limb lengths. Um, and then also high fatigue clients. So people whose work is really crazy or genetically you just get banged up and beat up really easy out of a little bit of volume, which by the way, does not mean your response to training is poor. I'm someone who gets banged up from just a little bit of volume. Uh, obviously, I'm doing pretty good. I would say as a power lifter, I'm not one of the best in the world, but I think I ain't too shabby on the barbell, so don't think this means you're an inferior lifter or that your genetic ceiling is gonna be necessarily lower. It just means you get less out of more. In fact, usually it means you're highly coordinated and pretty competent with your movement. So high fatigue clients, um, basically anyone who is uh, you know, in a situation where their recovery is lower or they just tend to respond to training like that. And then lastly, enjoyment. So we will move on to what my workout splits like and the differentiating factors between a workout, full body workout split and a powerlifting split. But let's continue on with the training. So did the tempo acid grass squats and the close stance high bar squats. Then I moved on to some deficit stiff legged deadlifts off a of four inch deficit. Guys, these were fun. I went fucking heavy. I had ascending sets and I built up to 405 pounds. And I was going really controlled on the eccentric. Also, sorry if you guys hear Scout itching himself down below me. My little pup is down here itching himself. And he just stopped. There's the little guy always right by my feet. Um, so four inch deficit deads, guys. This is such a fun exercise. It works mobility and range position. It makes you very resilient. Your, your capacity will go through the roof. You'll gain crazy work capacity in your back and core. Love this movement. Um, then I moved on there to some short rest football bar bench pressing. So I was doing sets of 10 mostly. I had a rep range I chose, which was eight to 12. And I just needed to stay in that, that rep range. And I had kind of a load that I was aiming for. In this case, it was about 185 pounds. Give or take, I don't know what the bar actually weighs for this. So if any of you guys know, feel free to leave it in the comment section. Maybe the bar is less or more. Um, but I was doing sets of 10 with one minute rest periods. Scout, don't touch that camera. Don't knock over my camera, boy. I'll fuck you up. I'm just kidding. I love him. Um, so we did short rest periods there, sets of 10, and really focusing on explosiveness and contraction. You actually see as the sets went on, I got more explosive, and I was really focusing on squeezing my pecs and getting end range um, tricep activation. So these destroy your triceps and your pecs like crazy if you do them right. They're really, really amazing. Okay, you're going to come up here? Go ahead. Come on. Come on. Come on. Interrupt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Sit down. Sit, sit, sit. So after that, I went on to some single arm. Don't mess up my computer. He's messing everything up. Okay, I love you. I love you. The people love you too. The prime dog, the prime mascot. Okay, we're going to pause this because Scout's interrupting. We'll be back after these brief messages. Okay, buddy, you're messing me up. I need you to come over here. Come over here. Good boy. Okay, you go nap. You played all morning. I walked this guy. Hey, <laughs> down. He thinks I'm playing. I got to stop laughing. 
I let this dog get away with hell. He, he is so spoiled. He has toys everywhere. And I walk him like six freaking million times a day. Down, down, no. Okay, yeah, go get that. No. This is how you guys know I do all my footage in usually one take. We had a cut there because Scout's interrupting. So uh, after the football bar bench, I went on to some single arm strict dumbbell overhead press. Now these are amazing. When you do them single arm, you have a little bit more mobility. So unless you're someone who's really into like calisthenics and has crazy overhead mobility, which most power lifters, even me having pretty good mobility for an advanced power lifter, it's hard to get a good full elevated scapula and complete lockout at the top. When you go single arm, I'm telling you, try this. It's a little hard to balance, but you'll get used to it quick. You'll get a little core activation too, but you can lock out so much more full. It feels like a very invigorating lockout compared to a normal dumbbell over at press. It always feels like I can lock the elbow, but I'm almost like, kind of stuck in this constant tension feeling, which I actually don't want. I wanna work that end range scapula overhead work. So went on to ascending sets here, got up to the 80 pound dumbbells, which for me is really strong. My shoulders are incredibly weak. So this was uh, great to do. And dude, it sounds funny just doing sets of three. I got a gnarly pump. If your form's really good, you don't necessarily need high reps to get a crazy pump. It can help, but I got like an insane shoulder pump there. You guys can see it in the videos by the final set. Um, then after that, I went on to some core work. So no arms on this day. I throw most of my arm work and some of the other stuff on other days. So it's technically not crazy full body where I'm doing all this extra arm work. If you were a beginner, I might throw in another exercise or two. Uh, after the core work for some arms and you know maybe rear delts or something like that. Something you can do very quick that doesn't require long rest periods so that way you're not in the gym too long. The key with programming full body workouts is you don't wanna be in the gym way, way too long. If you start having two or three hour workouts, especially being a beginner and intermediate, th this is gonna be um, causing inferior training results. You're just gonna induce a lot of stress and you don't want that. So the key is to be fast paced when you're on these programs and to maybe even limit the amount of sets you're doing. For the core work I was doing, the plank pull throughs and Copenhagen planks, I was only doing one to two sets on those exercises. So very limited on the amount of volume I was doing there. Um, you know, someone else might need a little bit more volume, uh, but the, the point is, is less is more on full body workouts because your frequency is gonna be higher. Now, how do I have my workout split set up? So this is where it gets fun, it gets a little interesting. Um, so I basically, I've kind of combined like powerlifting centric style training with um, full body workouts. So a lot of people are gonna argue it's the same thing. If you wanna argue that, that's fine. To me, if I'm thinking full body workout, I'm thinking purely how do I target every body part I'm hitting for maximum stimulation, and then the exercises fall on top of that. So I start with, okay, I need to train the entire body. Here's the exercises I'm gonna do that with. So it doesn't need to be squats, benches, and deadlifts. I tend to use those. So that's where the powerlifting centric side of it comes into play. So I actually have the basis of the program where I have one day that's squat centric, that's today. I have another day that's bench press centric, that is actually on Sunday. So Friday goes squat centric, Sunday is bench press centric. And then I have a third day that's deadlift centric. Now with that, I bench press some kind of variation every day. So whether it be a floor press, uh, today was football bar bench with short rest periods, barbell bench pressing, AKA comp benching, uh, dumbbell bench pressing. I do a lot of bench variations. So at least one to two bench variations every training day, just because bench press and upper body responds a little bit better to frequency. The squat and deadlift, I only do twice a week right now. And it's kind of more like one and a half times a week, just in the sense that I'm only doing a squat or deadlift supplemental exercise. So my squat centric day today, we had deficit stiff legged deadlifts. On my deadlift centric day, I have front squats. So it's not a very, very specific squatting exercise. And that's where the full body is coming more into play. With these exercises, I'm thinking more hamstring and glute development. I'm thinking more um, quad or core development. I'm thinking beyond just how it's gonna carry over to my main squat and deadlift. Now, the, both of these exercises will carry over to your squat and deadlift like crazy. They're two of my favorite squat and deadlift builders. That's the funny part, but that's not necessarily why I chose them. I chose them more for their full body benefits. And that's kind of what I'm talking about is you have to think about what paradigm you're utilizing to create the basis of your program. So we have a squat centric, deadlift centric, bench centric days. Um, and then we always have supplemental squat and deadlift exercises after the primary opposing exercise. Meaning after my squats, I do a supplemental deadlift exercise. After my deadlifts, I do a supplemental squat exercise. Hopefully you're following me because I'm trying to be time efficient here. 
Uh, lastly, there's a high focus on intensity currently. And this is generally a rule of thumb with full body workouts. Not always, you can definitely do high volume full body workouts. You can definitely blow up some sets of 10 on your squats and go high reps and whatnot. But usually I like full body workouts that are a little bit more focused on intensity. If I'm going more for a volume overload, then I might actually opt for maybe something that's similar to a full body workout, but I'm going a little bit more broken up and a little bit more volume dense on very specific body parts. And probably I'm not, I'm training more than three times a week. I'm probably gonna be training four, possibly even five training days a week and splitting up the body a little bit more. So that way I can have more exercise slots and be able to induce more total volume and workload. But what you have to understand is you wanna ebb and flow. Don't think always staying in high volume is gonna be optimal for muscle gain. That's not the case. You gotta flow into that intensity sometimes. And other times you flow into that, that volume and there's, there's a flow to it. There's a literal flow to your programming and training. Currently I'm doing really well on intensity. So I got kind of three, just three training days a week, all full body, higher intensity focus, really heavy weights, not a ton of reps or volume. I will get back to some volume work at some point for now. This is gonna elevate that baseline strength for me, get my strength really high, still build a lot of muscle. I promise you, you're gonna get a lot of muscle breakdown from this. Um, and well, and that's actually, that's kind of a bad statement because that's not just the way, muscle doesn't just grow from muscle breakdown, it just comes from sh uh, stress stimulus. So that's a whole video for another time. But there will be a time and place where I go back to uh, high volume. That's it, guys. That's it. We're done. I hope you guys are doing well. I'm doing really well. We're getting ready for the move to North Carolina. Scout's really ready to go. Because as you can tell from my small-ass apartment that we pay way too much money for, sitting here in Kami, California. Kami, California, as they call it. Governor Mussolini. <laughs> I am ready to move, ready to get out of here, guys. I'll catch y'all in the next video. Comment down below. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. I love y'all. 